Adam Schultz is no stranger to the wilderness. He has hacked his way through jungles. He has stared down polar bears and was named one of Canada's greatest explorers by Canadian Geographic. But one spot on the map called out to him just irresistibly, the Hudson Bay Lowlands, a trackless Amazon of the North. In his new book, Alone Against the North, Adam chronicles his single-minded quest to explore the Again River. And Adam joins us here now on The Morning Show. Good morning. Uh, good morning. What a fascinating story this is. So. As far as anyone knows, this is completely uncharted area of Canada. No explorers been there? It's uh, unexplored, but not necessarily uncharted. Okay, unexplored. Uh, and it's a bit of a paradox. How can something be unexplored but not uncharted? But it has to do with the way it was mapped. It was mapped back in the 1950s using airplanes, so flying high above the wilderness just to make a rudimentary survey. Then on these black and white photographs that were snapped from the airplane, uh, the actual maps were created. So hence it's charted, but that's not really any more exploring than looking at a moon mm -hmm. in your backyard with a telescope is the same as the, the Apollo moon landing. Here's you know? all I need to know, Adam. Yeah. Does my GPS work there, yes or no? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> the GPS will work there yeah. if you have a satellite uplink, but I mean... I don't even, have one of those. Even, no. <laughs> in, uh, even in the year 2015, it's still possible to find things that aren't on the map. Um, or where no one has set foot. To our knowledge. I mean, yeah, to our knowledge. We don't have a time machine, so I don't like to say, you know, you can, we can never be 100% certain about these things, but mm. northern Canada is so vast, so sparsely inhabited. It's the biggest wilderness on Earth outside of the Antarctic. Mm. I mean, you can, it's literally possible to travel for hundreds of miles and not see any sign of uh, people. Is that why this area called out to you? Yeah, I mean, mm. the Hudson's Bay Lowlands, it's the Amazon of the north, as I call it, the biggest wetland in all of Canada, the home of polar bears and caribou, and probably my favorite fact of all, the highest concentration of blood-sucking insects on the entire planet. So. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid so. It's not what most people would picture when they think of majestic Canadian wilderness. It's a big trackless swamp, um, an Amazon of the north, really. So... Describe it more. Describe just finding your way there, and then how long did you spend there? Oh, well, I go there almost every year, and I do multiple expeditions there. My book tells the story of one particular obsession I had with this really obscure river that almost no one knew anything about, a river that was only added to the map in the 1950s. But, uh, yeah, I go up there for weeks, months on end. It's, By yourself, completely, all the time? Yeah, usually I do. So originally, I never wanted to be a solo explorer. I, I wanted to explore the wilderness with my best friend, but halfway through an expedition, he decided that exploring was more glamorous to read about than <laughs> well, Especially with all those insects. Was that by choice or just because you couldn't get anybody else to go with you? It was by necessity, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> he actually abandoned me out there in polar bear territory alone and I decided to stick it out and finish the expedition we'd gone to do for the Geographical Society. And after that, I just sort of fell into doing these journeys alone. So I spent weeks or even months out in the wilderness entirely alone with just the polar bears. What is tougher? Is it the physical conditions or is it the mental component, knowing that you're out there on your own and you've got to survive with just the items in your backpack? The physical side is very tough. I wouldn't want to underplay it. I mean, you're, you're always hungry. You're burning calories like mad. You're losing mm -hmm. weight like mad. You're, so, but the mental side is, is the tougher side. I mean, you have to mm -hmm. stay mentally sharp out there. It's, it's hard when you don't have anyone to talk to for weeks, right? You're out in the woods. You try not to talk to yourself. Did you have a Wilson, the volleyball? When you yeah. Talk to? yeah. It's never got to that point. <laughs> what do you eat? How do you survive for that amount of time? My food consists of a mix of uh, packed rations, like dehydrated meals that I add boiling water to, and a lot of, you know, power bars, cliff bars, that sort of thing, as well as fish that I catch myself and wild edibles. So, you know, I'm always studying different plants and things. What can I get calories from? This sort of thing. Well, wow. let me ask you why. Why do this and what do you learn from it? What does it teach you? Well, I do it because the age of exploration is not over. I mean, we think of explorers as something from the history books, but it just isn't true. I mean, even now in the year 2015, there's still lots of unexplored territory out there. There's still new species being discovered all the time in the Amazon rainforest and elsewhere. And it's still possible, even in Canada, to change the map by going out there in a canoe, just like explorers have done for centuries. So that's really why I do it. It's the thrill of the unknown, something that I think appeals to almost everyone.
And, That's incredible. And what does it teach you when you're out there? What, what have you taken back when you return to civilization? Um, always pack an adequate amount of bug spray. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, it doesn't really matter. No matter how much bug spray you put on, it only lasts for a few it's minutes. It's never enough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Those insects have never tasted human flesh before, and they like it. So. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I've learned always to stay humble because there's every time I set foot in the wilderness or in a forest, the one mm. thing that I'm constantly reminded of is just how little I know. I've spent my whole life perfecting my skills and I'm always studying plants like on my way here mm -hmm. um, but there's always so much more to learn I mean our world is just more vast and complex than we realize it's still possible to discover things in your own backyard that you never knew were there when you start turning over rocks and things Adam Schultz amazing. thank you so much a book is called alone against the north nice to meet you thanks for having me